Hey guys, I'm Rosa Van, and welcome back to another episode of The Silver Case. Where we last left off was that we were basically following along with a little kid. Uh, damn it, I haven't I haven't seen his name in a long while, so I forgot his the guy's name, the little the little guy's name. Uh, but yeah, basically we're basically helping him with Hikaru, which is an easier name to remember. A uh, very popular name, I guess, in J Japan for me, in my mind, I guess. Um, yeah, we're helping him to solve a mystery with Hikaru, but so far it's been leading into these weird places where the guy is more so talking about his life and his and like his friends and and, and his frenemies and stuff like that. So I'm just like. I don't know what's the point of this kid telling me these things. Like, why are we following him and not helping Morikawa with some other stuff? But I mean, then again, Morikawa wanted us to help this kid out and see what we have, what what we can find off of this kid. But there's a point where it just feels kind of like draw, like drawing out for something for too long. Nothing TV wise, okay? Like, I just feel like it's just drawn out for so long. It's like, when will it kind of like? turn around and be different and plus we are also seeing scenes of stakeout uh stakeout between tetsu and sumio uh sumio is probably like just tetsu and sumio are both probably like getting tired with their stakeout but apparently it's important for them to like pay attention to whatever they're looking at at this rich complex expensive complex but yeah in last episode it's been an hour so I, we're almost nearly an hour of an episode so i do apologize for that uh hopefully this episode's a little shorter than that but we'll see, I guess. T t from Takeshi Kinjo to Superstar. To me? Am I Superstar? Subject, dear my, dear my friend. I'm really looking forward to meeting you. Bells are sure to ring in fanfare at that glorious moment. Please give the girl my regards if you see her. She's bound to be late. She always has been that way. She's always been that way. But she isn't a bad girl. I'm sure she'll like you. But please, don't stop her. She's trying to enter into a brand new world. So I want to save her. Please give me your support. Huh? Some girl's gonna be coming over to my place, I guess? I'm a little concerned by that, considering that, uh, it was really out of nowhere. Because they did mention some kind of girl coming over to my place eventually. Alright, we're heading back to the apartments again, so we're gonna have to see where this is gonna lead us again. I mean, overall, this game is pretty confusing at best. I'd say. Um, I think if I didn't play the twenty fifth ward, I've been I would have been way more confused. But since I played through twenty fifth ward, it has some of the stuff that I would see in twenty fifth ward that's kind of like inspired by this particular game, and it's not like word for word the same thing because this one has a bit more consistency in the idea that we're looking for like inve we're investigating things versus having to hop between stories between characters because hopping between stories and characters are a little bit more jarring for me than than this where it's like it's a bit of the storyline of characters but at the same time understanding the uh the investigation cycle that they go through as a heinous crime unit here all right let's talk to morikawa how about it I've done okay with gathering. That boy have done... That boy have summoned anything to go on? You don't need to rush it. Take your time. Something will pop eventually. Chizu? Chiz Chizu? Oh, women are complicated. Us men can't really understand them. There's a program. A really specific original one. Chizuru is especially complicated. She's half assedly sticking her nose into forensic investigations, so she's being pressured by all these unspecific personalities. Protecting her own self-consciousness is all she can do. Her job is to take in other people's consciousness. You know? I don't know why- what, <laughs> I didn't realize there was a word called consciousnessness. <laughs> Conscious, consciousness is okay. Yeah, that is not a word I've never seen. That is never something I've seen before. <laughs> I don't know even if that's even a word. I'm just surprised that's that's a word there. <laughs> so basically, she's like the f fortune tellers on Mount Asoto. It's a really tough job. It'll get better once the storm blows over. She just needs to be left alone. A little bit. 
she's not a little kid anymore. Once she remembers that she's a professional cop, she'll be right back. Anyway, Robs, you'd best solidify your position here while Chizudu's out. Let's go. Roz, we're gonna check out that area around the complex. See if we can get any info from the locals. It isn't glamorous work, but this is important too. Really? The results of our questioning have already disappeared from backup. That's in the past. Leave your stupid comments in the pocket in your pocket. I've got my way of doing things. Let's go. Okay. Um, I'm guessing there's nobody I can talk to here. I'm just gonna double check, do a double double round to check just to see if there's anything specific that I can just interact with randomly. But yeah, I'm, I am a little bit worried of uh, about Hachisuka. She hasn't really come back since she last said that she would go and solve this case on her own way. But I do think that she has a point on how she finds her answers while Morikawa does the same. He has his way of finding his answers as well. So there's no guarantee that there's always like one way to solving something. And I, I, I mean, this is reflective in life and reflective in almost every like business you go into. Wait, what? Why do we stop halfway to uh, or part ways through to the apartment? Sorry, Roz. Gotta take a quick piss. Huh? Oh, I hope he's doing all right. Oh! Who's this lady? Her image, like, burned into my brain somehow. Wh what? Ross, move out! That's Chizuru! Oh, wait, who's Chizuru? Is Chizuru Hachisuka, or, or is Chizuru the lady that's been... That's been uh, on stakeout because I know that the the guys were chasing after this lady. I think maybe from from their stakeout. I like how there's just this animation of us driving really fast to chase after her. <laughs> I love the stylized like action though, which is really nice. You there! Stop the vehicle! I don't know. I'm, I'm just pretending like he's shouting it out loud rather than doing like the whole like speaker microphone thing because our car didn't look like we had any oh oh she stopped it is Shajisuka isn't it Roz dri Roz driving <laughs> he's pretty good so what do you want I'm off duty right now I'm just a civilian what is this desperate driving you and you are such a good girl Want me to make you feel better? Whatever. I told you. I have my own way of doing things. So, is this your new partner? Good timing. By the way, is this some kind of structural problem that the steel is cheap and there are old marks some elsewhere? Mm. Can I talk to you in private for a second? I'm fine. Oh my, they're really close. <laughs> Why are you turning me down? I'm not. In that case... Do you even understand? I don't care. This shouldn't be the time for thinking. Well, not more than anyone, you should. Your father, huh? Stop it. Don't even bring that name up. I'm just a doll. I can't change anything. Ross, can you head off to the scene on your own? Sorry. Don't ask. Start questioning people thoroughly. Check every apartment. Check every apartment rooms or numbers. There we go. Check every apartment numbers. The inner garden too. Try going back again. The mystery's there. Don't forget to talk to people. Now get on it. Interesting. So there is that little, like, romantic complexity that they have with each other. So there is... So the, the guy was right. The, uh... What's it called? The... 
I forgot his name already as well. The guy who who was like Eeyore, the guy in the office, did mention that they have some sort of relationship with each other. And he smelt it. And he smelled it. So he was right. That's so weird. <laughs> so they do have a sort of relationship kind of thing going. Uh, Hatsuka and freaking Morikawa kind of do have some sort of romantic ties with each other. I'm assuming that she's dressed like that and looks like that because her father wants him to wants her to get in a relationship with somebody because of business related matters and I think that's what's happening or that she's probably doing it to to uh, win favors over to like to, to get him get the, the mayor to like get some favors off of some guys and so she's being sold as like a, or not sold but she's getting used as like a a way to lure those people that he needs to negotiate in and favor him more of. And that's kind of sad if that's the case. That's really sad, dude. Anyways, that's only me telling from afar. Rather than knowing. Hi there. What's the matter, detective? You wanted to ask me some questions? Oh, okay then, come on in. Okay. Also, I don't know if his, if his voice is similar to what I wanted it to, because I forget some of their characters' voices. Go ahead, and take your time. Honestly, I've been troubled myself. The landlord and management company are always moaning. <laughs> moaning. <laughs> because it, it... Yeah, like, there's a term that's like... Being and moaning, so it's like... The point is there. Anyways. I mean, this sort of thing happens no matter who works as building manager but still as for me all I know about the people living here is whatever is written in their con documentation and it's not like I had any sort of personal relationship with Hiruma so that night yeah I was awake I remembered hearing us all sorts of bang but I never thought you know recently more residents have been taking their trash out at night and it's a hassle to warn them about it every time so I thought that's what the sound was, at first at least. Then when I went out to clean up in the morning, I saw what had happened. Koichi. Oh, that kid on the fourth floor, right? Poor kid. The kid next door died suddenly. Hikaru. I, I think it was. Apparently he, was, he had a weak heart. Sounds like they were playing together and he suddenly had a heart attack. Oh wow. So Hikaru had a weak heart and died from just a heart attack. At least this guy is willing- the manager- the building manager at least told us the truth of what the hell happened. I'm glad this guy's telling me this because I, these are the information we've been missing out on and we have not gotten a single bit of anything since we got here. Like we've only known who died and we only known the kid and what he's mentioning so far. But why the hell does he believe that he Hikaru was captured by the other kids, though? That's the like the weirdest act of imagination that I've ever seen in my life. But then again, maybe the mom hasn't taught him right about like how people will pass on, imagining that his mom might be dead too, which we will, which will probably be very much more dangerous. I feel like, but we'll see. Whatever it was, at that age, she the shock she must have been really bad. It was weird because the space looked like I could have interacted with the space. But I guess they're forcing me out. Yeah, whatever. I guess it's the same system from walking in and out. That's really random though, that he just... Invited me in, tell me this information, and I get to walk out again. Alright, let's explore all the other floors. This time, this time I hope that there's actually some responses in each floor. At least one response per floor. Because the last time we've been here, it was annoying as hell. But it looks like the trash cans are one of the important clues that seems to be grabbed about for some of these people. Oh, there's actually people now. Yeah, what is it? A detective? The guy on the third floor, that is that was a suicide, right? I don't play with those kids, but I've talked to them a lot. Oh, is this guy, the guy who always looks out for the kids, because he he did say that he um Koyetsu, I think is the kid's name. Uh like literally tells literally told us that this guy's the one who's looking out for them or one of the guys in the second floor was looking out for them a lot of the times kids do stupid things so i'd tell them to be careful when i'm working on my bike 
they come over right away. Right over. I told them about how the engine is built, stuff like that. I doubt they understand, but anyway. They seem really happy. My mom works at night. My little brother was studying for exams. And I was out on my bike. On my bike. Those are basically our, our alibis. Ruma? On the third floor? I don't really know him. He didn't seem like a very nice guy, though. What a shock. The other kids... That has been really depressed, you know. I don't even know what to say to console him. Oh, by the way. That night... I saw Hiruma on the street in front of the complex. I rode my motorcycle, you know. I ride a motorcycle, you know. I didn't talk to him or anything. And the parking lot's in the back. So, that's it, but... He just ended with a butt, and <laughs> that's it? <laughs> I love how the guy is just like, but... It's like, he didn't even finish the statement. <laughs> he just said butt. He should have just said, but, yeah. Like, at least say, but, yeah. Anyways. And then he just closes the door. Because that's, that's, uh, that seems like a bit of a closure. Because his closure with but sounds kind of like cliffhanger conversation, which kind of seems a little bit unnatural. But, I mean, I mean, I think it's partly because of the translation, because a part of it, I think, is that the translation has to match exactly what the Japanese is looking for, but sometimes it gets miscount, mis- construed because English definitions or terminology of saying are a little slightly different than the Japanese saying, which is fine. I understand the nuances a little bit if it's being told differently. I'm trying to think. Okay. Who are you? The police? How about the other day? I don't know anything. But more importantly, do something about all the illegal parking out front. What, anything else? Leave me alone. I have a bad headache. About the dead guy? How should I know? Anything about him? How should I know anything about him? I don't care, okay? Can we stop now? Okay. Whatever. I'm sorry if I read her in a weird, terrible voice, but that's the best I could do for her. Because I wanted to... I'm not good with the female voices. I have to do, like, varying ones somehow, but... There's not a lot of, like ways I can do it. I'm a guy, so it's like I can't hit the high pitches like like ladies do. I know we had the kid here last time. Haruma. I used to go past the building newsletter to him a lot. His apartment was kind of dark and smelled like cigarettes. He lived in this building by himself, right? You know. There was definitely something creepy about him, but to think that he killed himself? That kid on the fourth floor, right? <clears throat> At the Kobayashi place? How unsettling. My kid is still small, so he wasn't really the age of, to be playing with the older kids. Oh, this guy is like actually a house a house husband, isn't it? Because he seems kind of like indoors a lot, and this is not a this is not a teenager, it's like an adult. But he looks like a kid. But to think that what we what could have happened? Really, how sad. The child's mother has been really upset. The building manager, Misoguchi, probably knows better than anyone about the residents here. We don't really interact with much with the, inter with the neighbors, so you should probably talk to him. I like how this guy always seems to point at the the uh, building manager and less so about what he knows. Because we're asking about what he knows versus what the other guys are saying. Because we already met with Mizuguchi, and he's already given us as much information as he could. All right, we don't know if, if, uh, I don't even know where Hiruma actually lives, because they didn't really give us uh, the exact number from where he lives. Okay, I'm guessing this is where Hiruma lived at first, considering how close he is to the trash, trash room. Because apparently a lot of characters are- a lot of, uh, suspicious stuff is happening near the trash rooms at best. Person. Still investigating. And still investigating. I have no- nothing to talk about. Aruma? Always came back home late. Probably had some kind of flashy job. I never really ran into him much. I think he was uh, at home during the day a lot. I could hear noises sometimes. 
But I've never really seen him going out anywhere. It's so creepy. That stuff that happened next door, and the kid downstairs dying. I'm considering moving out of here soon. I mean, wouldn't you? Kids around that age, they play around a lot, and yeah, it can be troublesome. But, if they get yelled at every time, then they'll have nowhere to play, right? They were building something out of the cardboard MySpace in the parking lot. You know, like you do when you're a kid. You play like that too, right? Remember the good old days makes me feel really nostalgic. I didn't want to break their thing down, so for the time being, I'm just parked on the street. Oh, so that's why there was a like, illegal parking on the street, or annoying, like, parking on the street uh, in front of the complex rather than in the parking lot. I ended up getting a ticket. Oh, by the way, detective, could you maybe say something to the traffic unit or someone? Tell them I'm about my situation. It's a good enough excuse, right? At the time. I have to answer again? Both of us work, so we eat out every day. I took the car to pick up my wife, and we ate at the family restaurant at maybe around 10.30? Then we went to Blockbuster. Oh my god, it's a dead store. Why is Blockbuster? <laughs> I mean, this game came out in the 1990s, so I, I do assume that it's before 2000, obviously, I think. Or maybe it was like at the tippity, tippity point of 2000, like the very, very early 2000s that this game came out. So technically, Blockbuster was still around at the time. So it's interesting to see that this is the case. Oh, I mean, the video shop, you know? And then they had the third season of Millennium in the new releases section, so we rented that. Oh yeah, I have the receipt. Here, it says the time was 11.40, and I rented two videos, see? At this place, if you rent two or more new releases, you can keep them for three days, so it's a bargain. So, we came back home just past 12. So how about it? That's a good enough alibi, right? You see, this kind of thing on TV and stuff. Oh, and here, we went by the convenience store too. This was 11.52. After that, the two of us just watched videos. Oh yeah, I heard this thing from my wife, but... When the detectives tried to go into the apartment next door the other day, they made a big fuss about the key not fitting into the lock. And where they checked it out, someone had to put a sticker over the keyhole. It makes me feel a little bit closer, doesn't it? It makes us feel a little bit closer, doesn't it? What, that wasn't funny? Well, this is all I have to talk about. That was a lengthy conversation with this guy. <laughs> I mean, this guy's conversation was, like, amusing for me at best, but... Kind of strange that this guy had, like, to go through his alibi more specifically. I think I would be that kind of person where I would go specifically what I did. Or, like, verbatim to verbatim. Like, I would just say exactly what it is but i think that if you speak too much which i think somebody on the video i forgot where i watched it but it was on somebody on the video that the uh i think either a cop himself or some person who was talking about it said that you should not say too much because they could use that against you if they uh if they get enough information off of you word for word but then again the point is why would you need that information if the person isn't that closely tied to said person so i mean they could also use it as an excuse in some cases all right there's a person yes please ah about the jumper from the other day huh anything strange hmm i don't think so oh yeah i did hear myself Maybe he was, it was the sound from when the guy jumped. Otherwise, there's nothing that's about it. Oh, yeah, just about before then, it looked like Haruma had just gone back. Yeah, I could hear his footsteps. It's pretty quiet here, so adult footsteps really reverberate. <laughs> just struggle with that word. What else? I did hear the sound of a motorcycle. That was definitely the younger guy on the second floor's exhaust, I'm sure of it. But you know, the guy on the second floor? He's kinda sketchy, but he's actually a good guy. Look into him, and yeah, I'm sure you'll find. You'll see. What? 
That wasn't a suicide. Wasn't that a suicide, is what I'm trying to do, but I, whatever it is. Okay, so there's an old man who's living here, who kind of had a sneaking suspicion. So apparently the the one thing that the guy said that is that nobody could go in here, apparently, so... First things first is that I'll probably need to figure out if we can find a key from the manager and see from there what we can find. But my assumption is that we're going to have to go to the rooftop because I think the Haruma probably jumped off from the top of the roof. Alright, let's interact with this one. We have not seen if there was anyone in here yet. Oh, there we go. Huh? Cops? What do you want? Oh, the suicide from earlier, yeah? What a bunch of trouble. Hey, when stuff like that happens, the value drops. Huh? The value of this place, obviously. That night, I was home. I ate dinner, watched the sport news, did some work, I brought home. The economy is bad all over. I envy you guys. It's not like you have to worry about going bankrupt or anything. Now's the time to spend. Use up all the company's budget. Do whatever you want, you know? Cause trouble for everyone else and then let another department wipe your ass for you. Anything I noticed? Nope, nothing. Really? Oh yeah. I think it's the guy on the fifth floor, maybe? Yeah, I heard footsteps. Footsteps going up the fifth floor. No, it's probably not even related, but just in case. I've never actually met the guy on the fifth floor. I mean, it was the first time I ever got the sense that he actually lives there, you know? Oh yeah, also, this is just my personal idea, but... I think that Haruma, on the third floor, got killed by Hikaru's ghost. Oh, it could be possible. This guy is not wrong. I feel like that might be the case. I see Hikaru's ghost pretty often. You don't believe me, do you? No, I believe him. I actually think he is not in the wrong place. I think his... Suspicion is pretty on point because we did see Haru Haruka's ghost not long ago telling us about protecting the the uh, childhood, fr childhood friend of his. I'm not going to talk to the, the kid, but I'm assuming that he's probably not in here either. Like, I don't think the kid that we're talking to is in here. Let me move to the fifth floor first, though. I mean, I don't want to move forward without having to question everybody in this place. And I'm afraid that there might not be a chance for me to go up here if I'm not given that option. I can't believe there's a fifth floor. This is the first time we're going to a fifth floor, though. There's a trash room up here. Wait. Did I see something? Okay, no, it's just the details of the walls. This is the only apartment spa space that's up here. Wow. Yeah, this is like the only one up here. Oh, there's a person in here. Who the hell are you? You're doing stuff like this with a face like that? Hmm? Have we met somewhere? Oh, it's more. Okay, so this is. I'm gonna do the deep voice because this is the. Uh, this is. Uh... <sighs> I forgot it was. What was the name again? The guy we saw in the, the shopping center. Hmm? Have we met somewhere? Maybe not. I know about the kid below dying. I'm not totally unrelated. But I have nothing to talk to you about. I heard strange noises on the floor, on this floor. But I was in a bad mood. Unfortunately, whatever happened right near me may as well have happened in another world. If you're done, then hurry up and take off. Your face pisses me off. Okay, yeah, because I, I'm probably gonna deep make him a deep voice because he kind of read, I kind of read that as a deep voice thing like in the past with 25th Ward where uh, where that character, I think it was Morimiya, I think his name was, where he had a deep voice, so I wanted to give him a deep voice anyways. So it was kind of a given, a gimme that I would probably give him a deep voice. All right, let's talk to the Koitsu because that's the only kid we have left to talk to. And then if nothing happens, we'll just talk to the manager to see if he has a key to Haruma's place. Okay, cool. So let's talk to the... 
yeah, let's talk to the uh, apartment manager to see if he can give us a key to Haruma's place because we didn't actually get to personally investigate ourselves. I mean, that's the best case we got. So he did jump, Haruma did jump off the, the third floor. Yeah, on the third floor, okay, yeah. He jumped off the third floor on his balcony, I guess. He didn't take the roof thing, maybe. Maybe maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't really know. I think he did jump off the roof, though, from the fifth floor. Okay, I, can't, I have to, like, literally do that. Nice. Nice work. What? That's it? <laughs> nice work? What does that mean? I don't get it. <laughs> All right, let me let me try doing Haruma's place. I guess let's let's try to let's try the Haruma's place on our own first, and then if we don't have any way in, then I'll just check the parking lot. That's probably my plan for now. Yeah, we're already on the thirty-minute mark. That's a lot. This is a lot of investigation to do. I think this is a really cool uh, cool way of making me explore space like this. Um, because there's not a lot of games that do this kind of thing where it's interesting to me. Okay, there's nothing. All right. And then the best thing I can do is just go to the background, to the to the parking lot, and hope for the best from the parking lot, I guess. Yeah, let's explore. It. Let's explore the parking lot a little bit, and then we'll end the episode uh, once we get there. Because I think that's where we'll probably call it for now. Because I think that there's a lot of investigation for this thing, but there's like we haven't advanced in the story yet, so. See what's in here. Oh dear god, what the fudge was that? I just walked up in front of whatever that is. I won't allow it! I won't let anyone bully Koichi. So I'm guessing that's Haruka? Or, uh, Hikaru? Hey! Hey! Is this Koichi, Koichi again? Yeah, it's Koichi again. Hey, over here! What are you doing? What are you doing over there? Hurry up and come here! Oh, it's Hikaru. Koichi. Koichi. Forgive me, Koichi. I'm sorry, Koichi. Uh... I, okay, I guess? I think Hikaru was about to kill us, I think, for trying to poke into it too much. But I'm assuming that Hikaru is probably, like, following us in general. Uh, because he thinks that we're not protecting him, or maybe? I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see. Alright. Um... Yeah, I'm thinking about ending the episode here, I guess. Because I don't want to go too far out into the episode, but... You know what? I'll try it. Screw it. Scoot, 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 scoot it. Scoot it. Because I feel like if I turn to this side and move forward to wherever uh, Koichi is, then that's when we'll probably... Uh... Yeah, that's probably when we'll probably get forced into a, com a long dialogue of what Koichi is going to say or something. Or what, uh, what, what Hikaru is going to mean for this uh, particular part of the chapter. I'm guessing the chapter is going to end after this part, though. Like, after we go through this and also go through the stakeout once more, we'll probably figure out what the hell happens at the end of it all, but we'll see. So, otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys in the next episode or, or another video of mine, and hope you guys have a great, amazing day, week, and night, or whenever you're watching this. Otherwise, this is it for me in this episode, and, uh, yeah, we'll return some with some more Silver Case. I still think this is a really interesting game so far. I do think it's a little confusing at points in time, but it's not, like, to a point where I don't want to keep going forward to see what's happening. Uh, I think that maybe overall it might be easier if we figure out the truth as we go, I guess. Like, we, I mean, there's a lot of predictions and stuff like that, but we were just trying to figure out the truth in general with this case so far. Though, the bigger question is, how does this tie into Kamui or anything that's in the silver case? That's the question. Um... 
but we'll see about that as we continue going. So otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys in the next episode. Next episode, or nobody minds. And hope you guys have a great, amazing day. Roz. Ah.